Good evening. Welcome to our Collision Bible Study. It is Thursday, April 1, April Fool's Day. <laughs> I said this morning on our devotion, I was going to do an April Fool's, but it always backfires on me because somebody will take it serious and then I have a hard time correcting it. So I'm not about to try and do that today. But I've had a few people fool me so far, including my son. Um, so anyway, I want to thank those of you that continue to watch these devotions, to continue to watch these video messages. Good evening, Juan. Uh, appreciate every single one of you. Uh, know that we, we, we need to con constantly be growing our faith. And I don't, the only way I know how to grow our faith is what Scripture says. Your faith comes from hearing God's Word. So you're going to hear His Word tonight. Amen, Marcy. You're going to hear it tonight. So uh, let's, let me open the prayer and we'll get started. Father, I want to thank you for, uh, for everyone that continues to watch these, uh, these Bible study messages. God, I pray that you would empower them as a result of, uh, of your word, uh, that you would fill them with faith. God, we all need faith. Uh, we, we're saved by faith, and your word says we live by faith. So I pray that people's faith will grow tonight as a result of being a part of this Bible study. Amen. All right. Um, we're in Acts, chapter 15. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go again verse by verse uh, with, with, this mess, with this study. In verse 36, it says, Sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, let us go back and visit the brothers in all the towns where we preach, where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Uh, they, the cool thing about Paul is he, he continued to go back to the churches in the different cities concerned about how they were doing. And you have to realize it wasn't like, to, it wouldn't be like today. It wouldn't be like getting in a car and driving five, ten minutes to a church. They, they had to go on ships. They literally had to get on ships to go by sea to get to certain places uh, it was the fastest way to get in most of the cities were along the sea coast so they would get on ships to go to different cities it would take days just to get from one city to another but they they made that effort because they were concerned they were concerned about how their how the church was doing so I, I, I share this with you if you have a pastor that sh shows great concern about you and especially about your spiritual growth, you are extremely blessed. Those churches were blessed to have Paul concerned about them. Uh, you will be blessed if you have someone like Paul uh, that's concerned about your spiritual growth. Now listen to what it says here in, in Philippians. I found this on the web. In Philippians... Uh, 2.4 says this, Each of you should not look only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. So we need to do this. Pastors need to do that. They need to be looking to the interest of, of others. And then in, uh, in 1 Corinthians 10.24, it tells us this, Nobody should seek their own good, but the good of others. So if you have a pastor that cares about you, that's concerned about your spiritual growth, boy, that is, that is a blessing. Uh, that, that, is, that is a Paul in your life. Then in Acts 15.37, it said, Barnabas wanted to take John, also called Mark, with him. So, so they were constantly looking for others to join them in their ministry. Uh, I just want to talk about this a little bit. Uh, this is why Collision is constantly looking for people to, to, to get involved in ministry. Uh, we, we, we allow our members to start different ministries. Uh, most churches have unbelievable restrictions. In many churches, if you told your church you wanted to start a Bible study, you would have to go through all kinds of, all kinds of processes before they would allow you to even consider you to, have, to do a Bible study. Uh, we're not that way. We, have, we believe that if God called someone to a ministry, they will succeed. And if they weren't called, then they won't succeed. And we've had that. We've had people in collision that started a ministry, uh, and it didn't work. And then we've had others that started a ministry, and it worked. 
So I say, who am I? Who am I to make that judgment? I'm not about to make that judgment. If God called someone, then let him do ministry. 1538. But Paul did not think it wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. So here's Paul not wanting to take John because he had previously deserted them. Now, this is Rhymesuck. <laughs> I'm always wanting to give someone a, an, another chance. And sometimes it's gotten me into trouble because others in the church uh, didn't see it the same way I did. And they were not in favor of me giving someone a chance. And me giving, and sometimes I've it's backfired on me. But I've also sat under pastors that were dictators that, that, that called every shot. And that was no fair. That was no fun either. So I guess I love a church where everybody works together. Everybody has opportunity to do ministry. Uh, I, I love that kind of a church. And that's what we try to make collision to be, is, is a church like that. Um, 39. They had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus. So they, here they go again, here they go again, having another sharp disagreement. Remember, we studied that previously. Uh, same thing happened with Paul and Peter over circumcision. Uh, they, they would have sharp disagreements, sharp enough that they would actually separate and go different directions. Uh, it just shows that fellow Christians can, can disagree with one another. We're human too. I've seen this happen in every church that I've been involved with. Every church I've been involved with, I have seen this happen. And I've talked about that before. It's happened in collision a few times. And unfortunately, it caused families to, to actually leave the church, uh, which is not good, not good. But we're humans. We're humans. And things happen. And people disagree. And people have sharp disputes. Here's Paul, godly Paul. Barnabas, who was totally respected, said it's, we read earlier that he was totally respected by the church. So, good evening, Paul. So, so it's common to have that in churches. It happens all the time. Verse fifteen forty. But Paul chose Silas and left, commended by the brothers to the grace of the Lord. So Paul takes Silas, and Barnabas takes Mark, and they both go different directions. Now, imagine if that disagreement hadn't happened, they would have continued going on the way they were, and they would would, would, would only have, by, by having the disagreement, separating, they're now going to twice as many churches as they could have before. So again, God God uses that and makes something good come, on, come out of it. Uh, you're all familiar with Romans 8, 28, my, my favorite verse uh, in Romans 8, 28, where it says, tells us this we know that in all things god works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose we know all things work out for the good so here's a sharp dispute that they had but god made something good come out of it oh how many of us have had that happen in our lives right things that happen yeah i i just think recently of me feeling that the the, the contractor's test i was devastated i was devastated but again, God made something good come out of that. If I hadn't failed in the past, it would have been going on, and my, my son would have had to continue supporting my ministry. But by me not passing the test, now I had to go out to seek my own support, which God is using in powerful ways. People are stepping up to the plate and, and supporting my ministry, and I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I'm humbled by it all. I'm totally humbled by it all. And I'm humbled by people that can't necessarily afford it, that are struggling in their own way, and yet they still gave to support my, the ministry. That, that is, you, you, you don't know how much of a blessing that is to me. So God can take any circumstance and make something good come out of it. Here, this sharp dispute that they had and something good came out of it just by the mere fact that, that they were able to visit twice as many churches now. And then the last verse, in verse 41, says, He went through Syria and Sicilia, strengthening the churches. Paul went through these towns, strengthening the churches. So I guess the question is, 
how, how did he do it? And the question is, how can we, how can we strengthen our church? So I want to spend some time talking about this now, okay? Uh, let's talk about how, how can we, how can we strengthen? You all, hopefully you all have a church that you, that you attend. Paul, I know that you're, you, you attend Emmanuel now, and you, and you attend, you, you actually got double church. You attend Collision and Emmanuel. Marcy, I know that you, when you're here, you, you attend Emmanuel. Grace, I know you're part of Collision. Uh, we all have our own churches that, we, that we're a part of. So, so how can you strengthen your church? So l let me give you some ideas, okay? The first one here. I'm going to go to Hebrews. I'm going to go to Hebrews chapter 10 to show you the first way that you can strengthen your church. It says, Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another. The first thing you can do to strengthen your church is just simply to attend it, to make a commitment to your church, to attend your church. Many churches now are that have their own facilities are able to meet outdoors. Emmanuel, I know, I know that Emmanuel's meeting outdoors. New Life Church meeting outdoors, and I just heard today that that starting Monday in LA and Orange County, they're going to open up churches now to 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 fifty percent. But I don't know whether they're going to st allow them to sing in church. They may not allow singing in church. But but you still have opportunity to attend your church. Collision can't, unfortunately. But you still can by watching the, the video on Sunday. Uh, now, here, here's the scary part, okay? Um, we started out. We started out having over 100 people every Sunday watching the video on, 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 uh, on, on Sunday mornings at Collision. And, and, it, and it just steadily is going down to where last Sunday there were 52 people that viewed it. And I just heard this on, on the news. Church attendance, church participation in 2020 dropped by 50%. Now, I understand that, but the pandemic we weren't even able to meet. So it dropped by 50%. And, and then now the question is, how many of those people will return when they are allowed to return? Because I know the churches that are meeting outside, I know because I've talked to many of them, that they're getting about 20 to 25% of their congregation showing up. So the first thing you can do is to strengthen your church, is to attend it when you're able to. You, you, you will strengthen your church with your presence. You will be an encouragement to others and especially to the, your pastor. Look what it said here. You know, get together as some in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another. By getting together, you encourage one another. You encourage your pastor. When we get together again, when we're able to get together again, I will be blessed if everyone from Collision shows up. I will just be unbelievably blessed and then if others come and visit that'll be beyond blessing so the first thing you can do to support to strengthen your church is simply by attending it second one I'm going to go to first corinthians 12 7 second one is simply by using the spiritual gifts that the holy spirit has given you okay it's great to attend a church but it's so much greater to be the church, to be the church. This is what it says here in 12, 7. Now, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. That means every single one of you has been given a spiritual gift, and it's for the common good, which means for the church. So the Holy Spirit gave you a spiritual gift to use for your church. God isn't calling you just to attend your church. God is calling you to be the church. And you can be the church by using the spiritual gift that the Holy Spirit gave you. That's why he gave you the Holy Spirit, that, that spiritual gift, to strengthen your church. He gave me spiritual gift of teaching. When I teach, I strengthen the church. Some of you have been given the, I, I, obviously you've been given the gift of, of giving because you've, you're, you're, you're blessing me unbelievably. So you have a spiritual gift, and God expects you to use it in your church. 
that will strengthen your church. Imagine, imagine if every if every person in your church used their spiritual gift. Imagine if every single one of them used their spiritual gift. What, what would that church be like? It would be a powerhouse. This is what they say. They say about 15% of people in a church, or I should say 85% of people in the church just attend. Only 15% are involved in ministry. You hear that? Th that's sad. Only 15% are involved in the ministry. The other 85 just attend. Now imagine if all of them, I, I could only imagine what a church would be like if everybody in the church was using the spiritual gift that, or gifts that the Holy Spirit gave them. How powerful would that church be? And then the third one is this one in Malachi. Let me read it. Will a person rob God? Yet you rob God. But you ask, how, how do we rob God? In tithes and offerings. You are under a curse, the whole nation of you, because you are robbing me. It could be the, it could be say you are under curse, the whole, your, the whole church of you, because you're robbing me. Bring in the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have enough room for it. That's powerful. That's powerful. So the third thing you can do is support your church financially. And, and, and boy, most churches are really hurting now. They're really hurting now, and I know many of you are hurting too. But, but, we, but we have to realize that Scripture tells us that the measure we use is the same measure that God's going to use with us. So give little, receive little. Give much, receive much. You cannot outgive God. In fact, what does Scripture tell us? You will be repaid a hundredfold in this life and the one to come. Now, here in Malachi, it's not talking about the next life. It's talking about this one. It says, give and see what I won't do. See if I won't open up the floodgates and pour incredible blessings on you. Wow. Wow. Uh, so, what, three things you can do? And I'm, I'm just going to give you these three. There's others, but boy, let's just start with these three. I could give you ten more, but what good would it do if we don't do the three that we heard of? So, the, so start on these three. If you want to strengthen your church? Attend it. Attend it. Make a commitment. Second one, use your spiritual gifts. Beyond attending, use your spiritual gifts and be it, be the church. Whatever maybe he's maybe God has given you a gift of working with the children. They're always look every church is always looking for help with the children. If, and, and think of this. I say this all the time to people. If we if when we start up again now on Sunday nights, hopefully we'll get some new families coming. So let me just use an example of of my daughter let's just say my daughter and my and my son-in-law attend the church and they have three young children okay they have a fifth grader and a third grader and a five-year-old now imagine if they came to collision they sent the children to the their, their classes and then they sat in on the on, on the on the collision service walked out saying wow I, we really enjoyed that Let, let's go back and then they get in the car and ask the kids how it was and the kids oh it was boring I don't want to go back. What do you think is going to happen now? Chances are they won't go back. Lily, would you go back if your kids didn't want to be there? Now, now let's reverse it now. My, my, my daughter and son-in-law go to church. They sit in on the service and they walk out there and they're like, oh, that wasn't what I hoped. That I have no desire to go back. But then they get in the car and ask their kids how it went. And the kids go, oh, mom, dad, it was so much fun. Can we go back? Can we go back? Guess what's going to happen now? They're going to go back. Lily, you will go back if your children love it. It's just so important to have. In fact, you should have the best. Remember in, in, in Acts where the, the disciples were waiting on tables, feeding the widows? And then they realize that well, we shouldn't be doing this. We're neglecting prayer and teaching. 
we need to find someone else to wait on the tables. Did they just say, hey, raise your hand if you want to wait on tables? You know what it said they did? They, they prayed and fasted and found the most godly men in the church to take on that task. It was waiting, it was serving food. And they picked the most godly people to do it. In churches, they sh you should take your best people to work with the children. There was a time in collision where I remember Becky was saying, we, we just don't have enough help to teach the children. And I remember one Sunday, the, the teacher didn't show up. And I, and, I told, and I told Becky, I said, you know what? I'm going to go teach the class. And she said, well, who's going to teach collision? I said, I don't know. I don't know. I will, I'll ask if anybody wants to do it. If any, Maybe they can have some open share and whatever you want to do, but I'm going to go teach it. And she was like, no, 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 you can't do that. I was willing to do that because children are just so important, so important. So we need people that are gifted of working with children so that that ministry is powerful, strengthened. So you, you all have different gifts. You all have different gifts. God wants you to use them. So attend the church, be the church by using your spiritual gifts. And then the last one, support your church financially as much as you are capable of. As much as you are capable of. Support your church financially. And remember what God says, you cannot outgive him. So let's start with these three. And if you do these three, you will be a total blessing to your church. Collision would be unbelievably strong if everybody in the church used their spiritual gift. Amen. Let me close with a prayer. Father, I thank you for your word. I uh, thank you, God, for, uh, for speaking to us tonight. Uh, God, I pray that those who watch this uh, live and those that will watch it later, take this to heart. God, God the, your, the church needs your people, God, now more than ever, more than ever. The church has been extremely weakened by this pandemic. The economy has been weakened and churches have been weakened. Uh, they need your people, God. Would you lay it on the hearts of everyone listen to get involved in their church, use their spiritual gifts, support it with their attendance, with their gifts financially, so that their church can be strong. And we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. <coughs> hey, thanks for joining me tonight. Uh, oh, Sammy with you, great. Uh, oh, Sammy's with great. All right. Uh, Sammy, glad to have you here. Uh, I always love when I see you. You're just, you're just a powerhouse. Uh, you're, you're a senior now, so I'm, I'm going to be talking to you when we get back together again. I'm going to be talking to you about getting involved now in, 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 in the ministry. Um, I, I think you work great with, with children. Uh, I think you would be a powerhouse at, uh, with, with children, just being around them. So, uh, so start praying about that, okay? Uh, everybody that's watching, thank you. God bless you all. Uh, share this if it meant something to you. And then I'll see you tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock for our daily devotion. Have a great night. God bless you all.